Good afternoon to all of you. We might wonder why we should still read literature today in this age of internet and multimedia. One very important reason, I would argue, is that literature introduces us to alternative ways of perceiving the world. Thanks to Dante's Divine Comedy, for example, we may uh, visit the cosmology of the early 14th century, rising from the pains of hell to the eternal illumination um, of paradise. Similarly, Salman Rushdie's um, splendid novel, Midnight Children, plunges us into the tantalizing flavors and aromas of modern India. So, thanks to literature, we may adopt uh, the perspectives of people from the past and from remote cultures. Today, I would like you to take you on another kind of unsettling trip, a trip in literature. Um, I would like to talk about two uh, fascinating writers whose work was marked by their sensory disability. That is, uh, the deaf-blind Helen Keller and um, the blind Jacques Luceron. But before delving into uh, the works of uh, Keller and Luceron, I would like to uh, make you familiar with the perceptual power of literature through my own personal experience. Because, as you may have noticed, I am myself uh, totally blind. That wasn't always the case, though. Uh, a rare eye disorder caused this uh, loss of vision when I was five years old. You may think that this uh, sudden loss of vision resulted in an immediate darkness, as if someone had switched off uh, the light in my head. Well, but that's not at all what happened. In fact, mentally, I kept on seeing, picturing the world, spontaneously uh, around me, like faces, um, buildings, people, and so on. Yet, whereas in daily life, these images were rather vague and blurry, they became much more vivid as soon as I read descriptions in literature. So you could say that literature reactivated uh, the visual memories from my early childhood, uh, kind of recycling them into the building blocks for imaginary landscapes. Meanwhile, I discovered another interconnection between words and vision. Uh, I was about eight when someday my teacher told me that uh, the Braille text under my fingers was completely white. How could it just be white? I wondered a little confused, because for me, every single letter had another color. Just like any person I met or any piece of music I heard evoked another shade of color to my um, mental eye. So, due to my teacher's remark, I realized for the very first time that two people can perceive the same thing in a very uh, different way. These um, uncommon youth experiences aroused my curiosity concerning sense perception and would later on also fuel my research as a literary scholar. Then I also found out that this coloring of sounds of mine had a scientific name, synesthesia. Um, as a perceptual phenomenon, synesthesia was already signaled by psychologists in the 19th century. And it was also a source of creative experimentation for writers such as Arthur Rimbaud or for a painter like uh, Vasily Kandinsky, whose painting uh, you can see at the front page of my PowerPoint. Although synesthesia is uh, not very common, it is, it is still shared by people with so-called normal bodies and those with uh, disabilities. However, disabled authors are sometimes the first uh, to report on lesser known interconnections between the senses. And this brings me to the first author wh uh, whom I would like to introduce, and that is Helen Keller. I don't know whether her name still uh, rings a bell today, but uh, in the early 20th century she enjoyed quite some fame. Uh, Keller was an American woman who, as a result of meningitis, had lost both hearing and vision at a very young age. Um, but thanks to her exceptional intelligence and, and the help of a private teacher, she still managed to study and to earn a university degree in linguistics. In her autobiography, The Story of My Life, she tells about her way of living with this limited sensorium. This is uh, the first quote of Keller I would like to read out uh, for you. People have expressed surprise that I should notice any difference, except possibly the absence of pavements, between walking in city streets and in country roads. They forget that my whole body is alive to the conditions about me. 
The rumble and roar of the city smite the nerves of my face, and I feel the ceaseless tramp of an unseen multitude. Thanks to Keller, uh, we realize that sounds are sometimes perceived as air vibrations on the skin. In this uh, passage, uh, she describes um, the bodily effect of noisy streets, which she finds utterly annoying. Um, but as soon as she discerns a pattern or a rhythm in these vibrations, she finds them rather uh, pleasurable. Uh, she, for example, describes how much she had enjoyed the play of an organist in a church. I stood in the middle of the church, where the vibrations from the great organs were strongest, and I felt the mighty waves of sound beat against me as the great billows beat against the little ship at sea. So, through reading um, uh, Keller on acoustic vibrations, we understand why deaf people can say to enjoy music, and that their inner uh, world is probably not as silent as we tend to presuppose. But there is more to it. Uh, to describe her experiences, Keller also needs to uh, invent new metaphors, such as uh, the comparison between the organ stones and um, uh, the swinging of a ship at sea. So here we see how she goes against the normalizing power of language. We all need words to describe our sensations, but what, if, what to do if your sensations do not fit in the collectively accepted frameworks based on the five traditional senses? Then disabled people need to reinvent, to articulate new meanings through unexpected metaphors, so that their language use becomes almost necessarily poetic. The urge for sensuous poetry can also be traced in the writings of the second writer, whom um, I hope to save from oblivion today, uh, Jacques Lucerand. Um, having lost vision in 1932, Lucerand led a most remarkable life. During the Second World War, he would uh, even join uh, the French resistance, due to which he was later on uh, deported to Buchenwald. As he himself repeated many times, uh, the, the only thing which kept him alive in these yeah, horrific circumstances of the concentration camp was his attentiveness, his openness to every perceptible detail around him. Um, for uh, Lucerin, we can say the, the world was never anything like a distant spectacle, but always a living presence with which he had to engage. And this is how he explains it, and I quote, uh, the seeing commit a strange error. They believe that we know the world only through our eyes. For my part, I discovered that the universe consists of pressure, that every object and every living being reveals itself to us at first by a kind um, of quiet yet unmistakable pressure that indicates its intention and its form. Um, here I would like to single out that notion of pressure, which, according to Luceron, surrounds every object and is indeed a very practical orientation tool for blind people like myself. It is a kind of atmospheric density which um, blind people like me notice in large objects, such as walls, trees or, or parked cars. And thanks to this uh, pressure, which is mainly uh, registered at the height of the forehead, we don't need to touch these obstacles as to locate them. Uh, for a sighted person, it might be a little bit hard to imagine, but it is a matter of attentiveness. If you were blindfolded and brought into an unknown space, I think you would also know whether you've entered a small chamber or uh, rather a huge hall without testing the echo. And that would be um, thanks to the same faculty. So today, I can, of course, only quote a few suggestive passages from Keller and, and Lucerin. But I would therefore strongly recommend you to look up uh, their books, which have been translated into many languages. Because reading authors with disabilities is of the utmost importance for several reasons. Uh, first of all, it reminds us of the enormous richness of perception that is so much more varied than is suggested by the yeah, traditional distinction of five separate senses. The senses rather intermingle, constituting uh, practical configurations. And this not, not only shows the adaptive nature of perception, it also urges us to rethink the notion of disability. We are used to conceiving of blindness, deafness, and other types of disabilities in terms of lack or deficiency. 
But while reading uh, the life story of Keller and Luceron, we realize that all the senses somehow go through a creative reorganization as soon as one sense is uh, physically dysfunctioning. And this brings me to the second reason why it is important to still listen to these deviant voices, because they go against the enormous force of normalcy, the self-evidence of our daily frames of reference. In uh, Western languages, for example, we associate vision with light and knowledge, and blindness with uh, darkness and ignorance. Well, these are metaphorical structures who were invented by sighted people who have really no clue about the inner life of the blind. <laughs> so I would say that uh, reading their writings is probably the best suitable way to uh, enhance mutual understanding. Concluding more in, in general, uh, literature creates that imaginary space where individuals can meet and speak about their experiences more freely than anywhere else. It is true that in literature these uh, individuals may be fictional characters, but the main point is that uh, even these fictional characters are split-offs of our imagination, which is always informed by our physical bodies. So I would say that literature uh, is an invitation to leave our natural outlook on things behind, and to adopt another human perspective. Or, as Luceron told his imaginary sighted reader, I didn't tell you that my experiences are truer or more complete than yours. That would be a ridiculous presumption, even a lie. I said that the time has come to compare our experiences. Thank you. <laughs>